Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, good days. This is Fu Chao from China Mobile, uh, giving you this uh, virtual session from uh, Beijing, China. Today, I want to uh, share our continuous integration, continuous testing, and continuous delivery uh, pipeline we're using in China Mobile, and also share our view for the uh, DevOps loops uh, for our future telco cloud. So on the second page, uh, I actually listed the, the, the contents I want to share in this session. First is about the, the challenges uh, we see for the telco cloud. And secondly, I want to share the view we have for the whole DevOps loops for future telco cloud. And finally, I want to share some of the experience we got when we constructing our telco cloud. So um, talking about NFE, NFE actually the first uh, the kind of uh, concept was uh, proposed eight years ago uh, by SENFE in the uh, white paper. And then SENFE work, work, worked out the, the framework. It is a very well-known framework for NFE, and it's very simple and straightforward. However, today I want to share with you the, the real NFE in reality. China Mobile actually launched our uh, telco cloud construction since uh, 2019, uh, which I think is also one of the world's largest NFE projects so far. With tens of uh, thousands of servers in total, uh, we have this cloud located in eight regions across the country. Um, here I, I, I try to give you some of the examples of how our source pool actually look like. Hope you could have some uh, direct feeling on how the complexity would be for our telco cloud. So you can see for the first resource pool, we have uh, server switches and uh, distributed storage from di all different vendors. However, we have uh, OpenStack and VNFs from the same vendors, uh, which means that interoperability between VNFs and the, the OpenStack will be uh, much easier because uh, they could have their uh, interface, uh, own private interface. Uh, and then, but if you go to the, the third resource pool, you can see that the BNF and the OpenStack are from uh, different vendors, which means that you should have to deal with the interoperability between these two. And when you go to the second resource pool, you can see uh, some of the BNFs are from the same vendor, but the others are from different vendors, but they use separate uh, orchestrator. But you, if you go to the fourth one, you can see that it, they share the same orchestrator. So we have to also deal with the interoperability problem between the orchestrator and the third party uh, VNF manager. So I guess uh, this could probably help you to understand more about how our telco cloud could be like. So on the third page, I want to show the, the challenges we have. First is about the scalability. We have more than 60 resource pools uh, constructed almost at the same time, which actually require a lot of uh, human powers and resources into this. And each resource pool actually include physical servers of more than 1,000. And we have actually huge workload for configuration, deploy, and testing for all these resource pools. And the second challenge we see is a multi-vendor problem. I think you have some uh, feeling about that in the previous slides. Uh, in total, we have uh, tens of vendors included in our telco cloud. So you can see that we have complicated interoperability work we need to do, and we need to check the interoperability, uh, make sh making sure that they could work together. And um, when you're actually going deeper into the cross-vendor interfaces, you, you will realize that we are still lacking of a lot of standards and still lacking of uh, deeper understanding of the standards uh, when, when you do the interoperability. So uh, issues we see when we're actually doing this uh, telco cloud delivery. First is, uh, although we have uh, developing a lot of automation tools uh, in the open source community and also uh, in vendors' own product, but when we're actually constructing such a large scale cloud, we still see that we are lacking of automation tools. Most of the vendors are still deploying the cloud manually and, or just to use some simple automation scripts. Efficiency is the biggest problem for us. 
Uh, I know automated machine tools they are developing, but they are they have never tried these out in such huge scale. So people are not quite so confident with that, and eventually they decided not to use these automation tools. So the second one is about interoperability. This kind of issue actually happens when different vendors' products need to integrate and work together. And a lot of interoperation needs to be uh, decided and worked out, and even the software needs to be modified on site, which you know, it takes a lot of time and uh, you cannot count on, the, on those things that actually are worked out just on site. And third is about the manual configuration difference. Uh, you know, when you finish the, the deployment of the cloud, you need to do a lot of configuration work. However, these configuration may be different in different roles uh, because they are done by different engineers. And some configuration may cause the performance decrease due to the lack of experience of the, the engineers. So this is also some problem we face in our telco cloud. So now uh, I would like to go to the second session. Uh, second part of my talk is about our view for the future DevOps loops. DevOps. DevOps is a very, uh, I think, very hot topic actually in these years, especially when we talk about cloud native, when we talk about the uh, CI, CD for the software. But we also consider that DevOps is very important for our telco cloud. Uh, but probably we need to uh, make it much clearer how DevOps actually means for telco cloud. It's probably a little bit different from the uh, whole DevOps loops for the uh, software development. Um, for cloud-based telco cloud, uh, we, we consider it's very important to build up this DevOps loop to make, make, make sure that we have a normalized planning, deploy, and feedback loop happening actually in an automatic way. It is also important to keep in mind that the scalability and multi-vendor nature of this telco cloud. So when you design the DevOps loops uh, for telco, you need to realize these two things. Uh, there are actually a lot of uh, DevOps tools we could already utilize in telco. However, there is also need to develop new tools and, and even standards interfaces in order to solve the challenge for the scalability and the multi-vendor problems that I mentioned. So um, on, the, uh, on page 8, I actually share how we think the DevOps looks could look like for future telco cloud. Within China Mobile, we, we think that it should be done in a continuous way. We call it as continuous integration, continuous testing, and continuous delivery. So in this kind of continuous delivery cycle, we hope it could help us to, to increase the efficiency of the future network cloud uh, delivery and also help to quickly feedback to the vendor products. So you could see this DevOps loops is different from um, the software development DevOps loops because uh, uh, it, it actually connects with, with vendors and it, it actually first go to the lab and then go to the uh, field, field to go to the uh, delivery site. So it, it could be a little bit different. Uh, however, there are a lot of uh, things we could reuse, we could util utilize from the whole DevOps communities. Uh, on 8.9, I want to share some of the details of how we see this. So first, uh, our CI, CT, CD, we, it actually includes three phases. We think from CI to CT, we hope all the interoperability issues could be solved. We provide lab environment and CI-CT automation pipeline to make sure that um, efficient cross-vendor interoperability actually could happen before we directly go to the, the delivery on site. So any new versions that actually happened in the vendors could test and iterate within days in our labs. And now we have uh, multi-vendors to actually join this, whole, this kind of activity to make sure that an, any time they have their version updates, they could promote that to our uh, version gateway in our lab. And then we will automatically build up the environment, deploy the new version, and do the interoperability test with other vendors' product. So um, with this, we, we hope that we could 
achieve the goal as uh, any vendor match can be tested in advance. Any product can iterate within days, and any lab resources can make full use of. We, we, we don't need to actually deploy some uh, uh, software and wait um, in the lab to, to do the integration work. Anytime you need to do any match, they will deploy it automatically in hours. And for the second phase from CT to CD, we hope it could be a precise copy from lab to site. Uh, versions tested in li lab eventually we will result in some uh, deployment and configuration scripts and codes. And we hope that these could be precisely copied on site and delivered automatically. So you see, when we do the continuous testing within lab, we actually have a lot of things that, and they are all in Docker images. We have the software version that actually passed the test. We have the script for cross-vendor interoperability. We have script for automation configuration tools for automatic deployment. A lot of these things, we put them in, in, in Docker images and then we transfer to, the, uh, uh, to our site to, to do the continuous delivery. We mostly the things we need to do on site is we, we have to modify the configuration parameters according to the scale and then the whole resource pool could be bring up automatically. We hope that an automatic delivery based on image and scripts already tested in lab, the cross vendor interoperability solutions already tested in lab, and the configuration scripts could copied across different pools to avoid the human engineer experience difference for that. So these are mostly the view we, for, we have for the future DevOps loops for our Telco Cloud. And for the third part, I want to share some of the things we are doing in China Mobile. So first, I, I want to give you some uh, big view of how our network look like. We start since uh, 2019. And now we finished two phases uh, for the construction. We have tens of thousands of physical servers uh, um, included in the cloud. And they are distributed in eight regions across the country. And you know it's a, it's a big country. We have about 20 hardware and software suppliers included in, in the two phase of construction. So when we do all these construction work, we we gradually decided that we need to set up uh, over an overall continuous delivery process. Uh, so we have a closed loop uh, network delivery process to, uh, we build up and it helps us to, uh, uh, to do the whole construction work independent of uh, any vendors or integrators. Uh, this whole loop is, is built based on CI, CD, and automation tools to improve the whole efficiency. So you can see that we do the planning, and then we, we bring all the things to our lab to do the pretest. And then we have all these things uh, put in the Docker image and bring that to the on-site deployment. And then we will do a, an automatic check and a verification, and then go to the operation phase. And when we find problems, issues we need to solve uh, in the operation phase, we will still get back to the planning phase so that for the next, fa for the next uh, construction, peer, uh, construction time, we will adjust all these issues in the planning, pa planning phase. So you see that this loop we're actually building around multiple automation tools and we're using CICD pipelines to make sure that this closed loop could run. Um, on page 14, I first want to give you some of the hardware automation we are doing. Uh, it is actually, when we are doing this uh, huge scale of uh, cloud construction, we realize that it's very important to improve the efficiency and quality of hardware integration since any hardware defects will eventually influence the software, de deploy on that, or, and will cause actual difficulties in sourcing all the issues. So uh, we actually, the things we're doing is we developed an automation tools for the full life cycle of hardware delivery. Uh, you can see on this uh, whole process, the, the block in red, they are all doing by the automation tools while the, the, the block uh, 
in white, they are a manual work. You, you can see there are actually quite a quite few manual work we need to do in this whole process. We will do the resource uh, planning automatically, and then we will do the pretest of hardware in lab automatically. When all is done, we will inject all the data into our hardware low-level design um, data, uh, data sheet, and then. At the same time, all the hardware will put on shelf, and the, the workers will work on the uh, connection of the, all those lines. And then we could just uh, turn on all the uh, switches and servers, and we will do automatic uh, device uh, configuration and testing, and we'll do automatic network connection check. And if, if we have uh, some and then if there, there are some issues we, we find through this testing, we will have uh, uh, analyzed the result put out and the workers will do the rectify if possible. And when eventually when all the issues are solved, we will do the automatic delivery. So you can see that with, with this kind of automatic delivery process, we actually reduce our construction time by one third. Uh, it actually only takes us uh, 20 minutes to configure all the devices and 80 minutes to finish all the testing on a single, single pool of uh, more than 1,000 physical nodes. So the major challenges all these process we're, we're dealing with is actually there are all different kinds of interfaces from all different vendors' devices. Uh, people who understand about hardware probably know the, the kind of challenges we have. So we have to design an open framework to easily adapt all these uh, vendor devices. Uh, this is something that we are working. And we are also contributing this to the Ele Elephant community now. I will show the details in the following slides. So on page 15, 15 there are actually some uh, detailed numbers I want to share with you. We have more than uh, 15,000 issues actually found and solved during our construction. and. Um, the, um, these uh, two uh, figures actually give you some details. We actually we, 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 are, we are comparing different solutions. Uh, for the manual solutions, I mean that we, it's like how, how all, the, all these work are doing traditionally. All the work uh, configuration and uh, are, are, are done uh, manually, and then uh, people will do a spot check which they choose five, only 5% five of the hardware to do the check. Uh, however, even that will cost us like 60 days, almost two months to finish all the uh, hardware integration. Uh, for solution C, it, it is uh, actually something we are doing in early phase of our con construction. We're still using the manual configuration, but uh, we're doing some automatic testing, and then we will rectify the whole things manually. For solution B, we actually are doing the manual configuration, but we are doing the automatic testing and automatic rectify. And solution A is the best, all the things are manual uh, uh, and automatically done. So you can see that the time taken for these different solutions, uh, we do a comparison of all these things, and you can see solution A actually give only five days to uh, do all this automatic work. Another thing you need to consider is also the configuration fault rate. When you do all the configuration manually, the fault rate is about 30%. Uh, so when we, when we realized this, we, we, we decided that it's very important that we also need to do some automatic manual, uh, automatic uh, configuration and also do some automatic rectify. So for solution and so A and B, we actually do the automatic uh, configuration, which make if you check all the code, the configuration won't be uh, causing any fault rate. And also when we uh, do uh, some rectification, uh, we are actually, um, when we find there are some issues, we will do the automatic configuration. Uh, to directly change the, the default issue. So you won't see that for default issue appear in the following result uh, analysis. So this actually helped us to, to hugely reduce the, the default rate. The best work we actually do is for solution A that we see zero fault rate for the hardware configuration. 
On page uh, 16, I also want to share with you the software automation delivery loop we're doing. We're using Jenkins, this uh, open source software, to build up the whole uh, CI CD pipeline. And then we are providing a general product description file for both vendor products and CMCC tools. So you can see that all the tools from vendors and from uh, CMCC, they are put into the same Jenkins pipeline to work with each other. And all the tools, they understand a general part description file. This makes uh, tools from different vendors and suppliers, they could work together to finish the whole procedure. So when we have a new version upgrade to our gateway, we will use our automatic tools to help uh, do the hardware configuration and environment preparing. And then we will use the uh, vendor suppliers uh, software to do the Vim uh, building and distributed storage deployment and also do the interoperability work between them using automatic scripts. And uh, we, then we will use our automation tools to do the test and eventually give them some report and feedback. Uh, but like you said, all these things uh, they are done under a general CI CD pipeline and a general pod description files. Page 17 actually shares some of the uh, results we got for the CI CD pipeline. We now actually are connecting with different vendors' labs, and any version updates from vendors will invoke an automatic deploy and system check loop in China Mobile's lab. So with this one, we actually we are able to continue to deploy and test the vendor OpenStack for more than 10 times a week. And each round actually only cost us less than five hours. So it actually helped us to iterate very hard, fast and precise. Here I also share some of the numbers we have for different vendors. You can see um, some of the vendors, they could e even iterate less than uh, two or three hours. So. Uh, my last page uh, is uh, uh, I want to share with you some of the contributions we're actually doing to Elephant community. So those things we're doing in, for CICD, for the uh, DevOps loops within uh, China Mobile's telco loop, we also see that uh, if we want to build up this loop, uh, we need vendors' help. We need improvements uh, in the whole uh, community for the uh, automation. So we decided that we need to closely work with open source communities to contribute these back to open source and make sure people understand the value here and also develop their own tools based on this. So for the hardware delivery work, uh, which I mentioned previously, we're actually contributing this to the OPNF CRV project. So this HDV tools actually provide an open framework for hardware check and with a quite easy configuration file so that you could adapt different vendors' devices very easily. Um, and uh, you could find some useful link in my slides. And also about the port description file, this is actually uh, some thing we already done in OPNFV for the passing years. But now we are contributing our general description files to PDF 2.0, which means PDF 2.0 actually need to evolve to uh, have more uh, illustration for the telco cloud to have more details included. So we are actually helping to contribute the general description files we are using within labs to the PDF 2.0. So I also provide some useful link in my slides. And finally, that's all. If you are interested in contributing our PNF work, please also feel free to contact our developers. Thank you, and hope you enjoy your time in this virtual event. Bye-bye.